This is a model of the Winged Victory of Samothrace, or Nike of Samothrace for short. This statue is prominently featured in the Louvre Museum in Paris. In the real world, this is a 5.5 meter tall statue. On my screen, this is an 11 and a half inch tall mesh file with over 5 million facets. This is a project we recently completed with Methods and Yazda. The work holding was actually provided by Fifth Axis, and the tool holders were Lindex Nikon, and all the cutting tools were provided by Mitsubishi Materials. This part is made out of aluminum, and being on a Yazda machine, we were trying to go for absolute perfection on this project. I have never made a part of this caliber in my life. This is such a really cool opportunity to make a really, really nice part. The Mastercam file on my screen is over 10 gigabytes in size. This thing takes the part from a raw piece of stock all the way to a finished part. In Mastercam, I used a one micron tolerance for all the finished tool paths with a one thousandth of an inch step over. This Mastercam file is an absolute monster. And in the following series of videos, I wanna show you some of the really cool Mastercam tools that we used to make this part. These Mastercam tools are the same exact tools you have access to. So we wanna show you that a part of this caliber is something that you could accomplish as well. This part was made in two setups. Both of those setups exist on fifth axis rock lock subplates. In operation number one, we basically finished the bottom of the part. We can see this is currently on a rock lock base on the pallet of the Yazda machine. Here we're installing four more rock lock pull stud features. There's some engraving that helps us orient the part correctly inside the machine for op number two. Then we flip the part over for op number two. This shows the actual finished item. Basically this is the operation one finished. So this is the starting stock of operation number two. To make this part, we have about 250 operations across setup one and setup number two. Because of the interesting shape of the Nike part, we had to be really careful about how we handled our material. So if we take a look at some of the stock models we have here, we can see that we had to really kind of remove material carefully, keeping structure in places that needed some structure because the wings and the back of the dress are some really, really delicate pieces. We have to maximize rigidity on this part so we have the best opportunity for creating a great surface finish. We don't want to have any chatter. We can't have these thin features wobbling around. We need everything to be really stiff and rigid so we can have the optimal surface finish. As we progress down this part, we can see we sort of work from the top down to the bottom. We want to try and keep the bottom of the part braced as much as we can. And this is not a case where we rough the entire part out and then finish the entire part. Here we do a lot of rough and then finish, rough and then finish. And the really impressive part is on this Yazda machine, after 250 operations of roughing and finishing, this part came out absolutely gorgeous where you can't see any step overs, you can't see any blends between tool paths. The overall cycle time on this project was over 110 hours. So basically five straight days, this part has been running. The project runs lights out. This thing runs 24 hours a day over the course of those five days. And what's really interesting is the Mitsubishi tools actually lasted for multiple parts of this. So this whole entire project is finished with a two millimeter ball mill. So every square inch of this part has been finished with the same two millimeter ball mill. That two millimeter ball nose then mill lasted for four parts and it was still going. So we really want to thank Mitsubishi Materials for providing us with some excellent tools for this project. And again, as we can see in these pictures, this thing came out absolutely gorgeous. And I really am excited to show you how we made this part in the following series of videos. And I want to encourage you to use as many of these Mastercam tools as you can.